By the end of 1923, Hitler sees it as his chance to seize power in Germany. And it, he's getting this popularity. The Nazis are getting this followership because the Weimar Republic is falling apart. You have the hyperinflation. The, the German people feel insulted by this French occupation of the Ruhr region. And it isn't just regular people who are starting to support the Nazis. It's a very notable people as well. This right over here is General Ludendorff. We've already talked about him as one of the believers in the stab in the back theory that Germany would have won World War I if it wasn't stabbed in the back by the November criminals who had taken control of the government during the revolution in October and November. He becomes a supporter of Hitler as well. In 1922, you have Mussolini come to power. This inspires Hitler. So as we get into November, Hitler sees this as his chance. And the way that he wants to take control is he wants to abduct or kidnap the leaders of the Bavarian region, and there's three of them in particular at this time, and then from there try to take control of the nation as a whole. And so in November of 1923, you have a gathering of those th the three gentlemen who, who are essentially in charge of Bavaria, a gathering of them and several thousand officials in Bavaria at a local beer hall in Munich, at a beer hall. And Hitler sees this as the the opportunity to take control. So this is where he launched his, launches his beer hall Putsch. And I know I'm mispronouncing it, but Putsch literally means coup d'etat, to try to overthrow the government. And so Hitler and his Nazis, they go to that beer hall meeting of the, of the government officials. They surround it with their paramilitary group, their stormtroopers. Hitler enters into the hall, gets on stage, shoots into the air twice, and says, look, this is the revolution. It is beginning. He forces the three leaders of Bavaria at gunpoint to pledge allegiance to the Nazi party and to this putsch and to Hitler in particular. But then things start to go a little bit uh, get a little bit, uh, start to start to dissolve uh, as Hitler tries to address some issues that are going on outside. The the members who are who they were going to kidnap are allowed to leave. You have chaos in the area uh, amongst the Nazis and frankly amongst the government throughout that evening into that morning. At which point Hitler and his followers and Ludendorff is one of them decide to march decide to march into into central munich all of this is happening all of this is happening in munich which is in bavaria they decide to march and it's during that march that they have a confrontation with the official government troops and it's unclear who fired the first shot but you do have an exchange of fire and during that exchange of fire i've seen estimates of about 14 to 16 nazis are shot a few days later, and a, and a few policemen are, or a few uh, uh, soldiers are shot as well. And then a few days later, Hitler is arrested. Hitler, Hitler is arrested. He's tried in early 1924, and then he is sentenced to jail. So all of his all of his ambitions were kind of uh, led to nothing. But in jail, he still continued to develop his philosophy. And he actually started to continue to develop his following. So he spent most of, roughly the second two thirds of 1924. In 1924, he spent it in jail. 1924 was spent primarily in jail. But while he was in jail, he dictated his autobiography and his, frankly, his belief system in Mein Kampf, which literally means my struggle. And it's actually banned in many countries. It's not banned in the US. Uh, but it does make for interesting reading, because you get a sense for, on one level, how bizarre Hitler's brain was and how disturbed Hitler's brain was. But on the other side, you can appreciate that he was, he was a very he was a strong communicator. Uh, even, even before any of this, people would talk about how transfixing his eyes were, how much attention people paid to him when he would give a speech. But you can even see this in his writing. And you can do a web search on it, and you can get the entire text of Mein Kampf. And it's, 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 it's disturbing and, and fascinating at the same time. But this is a little passage. And in this passage, it kind of it, it gives you an idea of, of Hitler's view of why Germany was having these failures and what he, in his, in his bizarrely disturbed mind, thought what the solution was. If we pass all the causes of the German collapse in review, the ultimate and most decisive remains the failure to recognize the racial problem and especially 
the Jewish menace. So he's blaming all of Hitler's difficulties on a on a, on, on 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 race on a racial problem, and in particular on Jews. The defeats on the battlefield in August 1918 would have been child's play to bear. They stood in no proportion to the victories of our people. It was not they that caused our downfall. No, it was brought about by that power which prepared these defeats by systematically over many decades robbing our people of the political and moral instincts and forces which alone make nations capable and hence worthy of existence. And if you read a lot of the other texts, what he's talking about is this decades of essentially watering down their society, watering down their society with other people. If they didn't water it down, they say the, 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 the defeats in the battlefield would have been child's play to bear. In heedlessly ignoring the question of the preservation of the racial foundations of our nation, the old Reich disregarded the sole right which gives life in this world. So he views this racial, in his mind, racial impurity as the reason why Hitler was in, in or what, the reason why Germany was, was facing all of this difficulty. And as we'll see over the next few videos, this leads to, this leads to one of the ugliest uh, and bloodiest periods of, of human history.